Good morning, good afternoon, and good <laughs> evening, wherever you are. Welcome to our live stream today on how to enable trust. I'm really excited about this conversation, Larry. It's super, super, super excited about this. Yeah, we're glad you're here. In fact, uh, in the comments, feel free to give a shout out, chime in. As we go through the conversation today, we're recording this for folks to uh, be able to consume in the future. We hope there's lots of questions and know there will be. So go ahead and put those questions in the comments and then we'll answer those at the end. This is a, such an important topic we're talking about here right now, Larry. And I think when it comes to where we are in sales right now, trust is such a critical factor. And the challenge is sometimes it, it's near the bottom of the list, if it's even on the list at all, when it comes to sales enablement, like how can we actually help reps build trust? Uh, I would, uh, Daryl, I would say that trust is the it factor and that'd be capital IT. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so, you know, I love as we get started, just thinking about trust, there's so many reasons. Trust can seem a little bit touchy feely, but the reality is trust is, is the fuel. Uh, trust is the fuel that helps create velocity. One of my all time favorite books on this <laughs> is Business at the Speed of Trust. Stephen M. R. Covey says, Hey, I submit that while high trust won't necessarily rescue a poor strategy, or while high, high trust won't rescue inept sales skill, <laughs> low trust will almost always derail uh, a good sales skills. And yeah, this is so critical. I, I would say that's straight across that's straight across the board, whether that be obviously in our business life or in our personal life, the same could be applied. Yes, yeah, so this is this is something I think, you know, one of the indicators of where of low trust is if you've got pipelines that are stalled out, uh, trust creates pipeline velocity. The other thing is that trust is simply what buyers want. As we get started, we want to just share some of these details because we believe that trust is not only the it factor in terms of success, it's what our clients and prospects are crying out for. And Larry, when you look at this number, salesforce.com research, and can I just round that number up? 100%. You <laughs> <laughs> I mean, say 79% of the research report that it's critical to interact with a salesperson who's a trusted advisor that adds value. To me, this is, uh, this is the ball game right here. And and that, you know, that's what's, it's funny. Yeah, you could say 100%, but then everyone would go, okay, where are you getting, really, where are you getting that number from? But no, you want to meet the 21% <laughs> of trustworthy sales professional. I, I just think I go back down, I'm going to reinforce this and reinforce this. It's the it factor. It is the deciding factor. And this is what subliminally is going on inside somebody's head is, can I trust you? And are you worthy of having a conversation with? That's right. And our friend, Charlie Green, you know, as we just think about this trust topic, um, this is a fantastic book, by the way. I love uh, Charlie Green's work. He says what buyers really want, even when they don't say so, is a seller that they can trust. And so that begs the question, um, are buyers perceiving your sales team as trustworthy and what can you do about it? And is it possible to actually build trust. I would say there's a there's a, a a challenge out there right now. This challenge isn't new, uh, but I would submit that in today's world, this challenge is maybe more challenging uh, than it's ever been before. And that is trust is at an all time low. I heard that the word was coined <laughs> in 2018, Larry. We live in a post trust society. That's not good news for sales professionals. No, it, it's not. And absolutely. And uh, before we really dig into the slide, you had said something just a second ago, Daryl, that I, I want everyone to key in on. That's perception. Mm -hmm. It's that's just think about this. Looking at this through the lens of a future client or one of your clients right now, and how do they perceive salespeople? This is what th this is why this slide is so spot on when we start talking about who are some of the most trustworthy people out there and some of the least trustworthy people out there. I'm just a big believer of perceptions in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah. And so this is the the real question right now is as sales enablement professionals, we have a lot of sales leaders on this call as well. 
What are we going to do about it? If trust is the currency of sales, if buyers want trustworthy salespeople, but there's a perception that um, that salespeople are a notch above members of Congress when it comes <laughs> to trustworthiness, and that's slightly below lawyers, what are we going to do about that? And I think we've been looking at slides like this for a long time, but now in today's marketplace, where we've just gone through a lot of upheaval and turbulence, we are as a culture in a post-trust era. There's not much trust in media. There's not much trust in politics. There's not much trust in anything. I believe now more than ever, it is critical for us to consider what can we do to improve trust building skills in our sales reps. And the real question is, you know, how are you going to fill the gap in your sales team? Yeah, and I, I think it goes back to as sales leaders, we can bring this to our sales teams. We can enhance and equip our salespeople to help them build trust. And we're, I, I can't wait to dive into this, Daryl. Yeah. So that's the question we have before us today. Uh, once again, welcome everybody. We see sales leaders chiming in from uh, actually all over the world, which is really fun. Uh, this, this is a global problem, by the way. Trust is the currency of sales, and it's also at an all-time low. So how can we fill the gap? Well, we started thinking about this. Um, and... We started thinking about this in terms of what are the ingredients of trust? Like if you were to enable trust, what would you actually need to do to enable trust? So we came up with an equation. Now, for those of you <laughs> who are freaking out, because I know most of us that got in sales weren't necessarily mathletes. But hey, this, this, is a, this is a simple <laughs> equation. Trust us on. Trust this on. Trust, trust this one. Right. It's a simple equation when you when you start to unpack it. And and what we looked at were what we believe, based on our experience and research, are the core components of trust. And the first two, I liken to the two sides of the trust coin. You've got to have authentic relationship. There's the personal side of that the relational side of it, but you've also got to have meaningful value. And Larry, if you've got one without the other, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, luck, if, right? if, well, no, it, cause we've always said, <laughs> if you can, if you can build authentic relationships, but you're not bringing any meaningful value, you got a lot of friends, <laughs> right. but that's about it. And you're going to have, but a you're going to need them to upset. buy you lunch. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but you're going to have a bunch of upset sales leaders, but this is yeah. Daryl. Let's just flip this around. And this is why we believe there's two sides of this coin, but if you can bring meaningful value, in other words, you're bringing insights to your clients, mm -hmm. but you're struggling to build those meaningful, authentic relationships. Yes. Your pipeline's going to suffer for it. That's right. And that's why, you know, it's interesting when you look at um, how we enable sales teams, you know, there, there is definitely, um, I'm just going to pull up, pull to talk about this for just a second before we go into the last two parts of the equation. We're going to take a dive into each one of these in our conversation today um, over the next 25 minutes or so. But the, um, the, the reality is when it comes to sales enablement, I've noticed in the sales enablement professionals that we've talked with and we work with, there's a lot of focus on product knowledge and there should be, I mean, you've got to know our product. We've got to be able to communicate value. Um, I think product knowledge is one half of communicating value, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, but there's a lot of focus on product knowledge, but where is the relational side of this and where are the people skills to be able to initiate grow and sustain relationships, especially in this interesting time we find ourselves living. Yeah, you know, yeah, you bring up a good point. And I just want to just expand on it for just a moment, because we've heard these sayings over and over again. These sayings were before us. They're happening now. They'll mm -hmm. be here long after we're off this, the face of this earth is this. People buy from people. We've heard That's that right. over and over again. We've also heard this phrase, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. We could all agree, right? They've been used over and over and over again. But if, at least for the context of this conversation, if we can believe that, then here's our challenge. What are we doing to develop the people skills and the relationship building skills at a sales leadership level mm -hmm. to help drive 
more trust and more credibility in a world where it's fairly low right now. Absolutely. So to go back to the equation, authentic relationships, meaningful value, what are the multipliers? Well, um, and by the way, I did pay enough attention in math class to know you're supposed to put a bracket around those, Larry. So uh, there there you go. For it, it, bring, it, br it brings me back to algebra. Now it scares <laughs> me. But uh, if you look at the multipliers, there's two multipliers that, that we're going to talk about today that can be enabled and we believe are very critical. One is the experience that your um, sales professionals provide to your prospects and customers. Um, there is tremendous, if you think about a sales professional being the face of your company out to the marketplace, uh, there is tremendous competitive advantage that can be had by thinking through and optimizing, creating an inspirational experience, and then taking that, Larry, to disciplined habits, because none of this works unless it becomes part of the cadence and the habit. I almost want to I almost want to change discipline habits sometime to disciplined action but nevertheless I love discipline habits. Yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, what we're looking at today in terms of the trust equation. Like what are four categories in which as sales enablement um, people and as sales leaders we can think about how we go about developing trust. So let's touch on each one of these and take a deeper dive in as we're thinking about this today, I want everybody to be thinking about your sales team and where is your sales team in each one of these areas. And the first one we're going to talk about is authentic relationships. And Larry, when it comes to authentic relationships, what are some areas where you think sales professionals need development and need some coaching and help? I, I, I'm going to go back to this. When, when I think of authentic relationships, it starts with the relationship that we have with ourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the core foundation of the first half of selling from the heart is if we want to build those authentic relationships with our clients and out in the marketplace, it starts with really understanding what authenticity truly means, which in one word, I sum it up as congruency does the walk match the talk. Mm -hmm. And I'm just a big believer that the more we connect to ourselves, the more we build that relationship with ourselves. Now, some of us might be going, well, this is, this is, uh, what do you mean by that? Yeah. However, I'll submit to you, the stronger the relationship you have with self, the stronger the relationship you'll have in building those with your clients and your future clients. Yeah, absolutely. And this congruence is really, really important. And one of the things we want our reps to be trusted and that need, means they need to be trustworthy. And uh, you know, one of the ways we can help enable and equip our reps is helping them discover who they really are. We, we want them to represent our company and our company values and mission and uh, value proposition and all of that. But in order for the uh, trust to be built, there needs to be authentic uh, authenticity. And authenticity comes from knowing who you are. We can help our reps with that. The other thing is connection. Um, connection. Now, when we say connect now, <laughs> what does everyone think of, right? They think of that button on LinkedIn that you push to connect. That's, uh, that's not connection. Uh, maybe that's like the first 2% of connection. But when it comes to enabling sales reps to develop authentic relationships, when you think about connection, I'm curious, Larry, what are some of the, the things that come to mind in terms of what needs to be enabled inside a sales professional to authentically connect with a buyer? I just think it's it, it, it goes back to understanding how to bring curiosity and courage and having those deep conversations and mm -hmm. letting those conversations go where they need to go. And to, and to me, this, this is where the strength comes in is quite often those, they've always been company centric or product centric, rightfully so. And mm -hmm. at some point that needs to be brought in, but in the very beginning is I need to get to know who you are and I need to bring that curiosity. However, I need to have the courage to do it and I need to have the confidence to do it. Yeah. And these are skills uh, that that can be taught and learned and developed and the ability to connect uh, at a meaningful level, at a level that um, that is, once again, not just pushing the button. You know, uh, of course, we you know, we all have seen 
the opposite of this, which is the connect and pitch, you know, yeah. things. I struck a nerve, Larry. No, yeah, yeah it's just, it, it, <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> I just, <laughs> my wheels are turning, but I, I just, mm -hmm. I, I was, as I was listening to what you're saying about connection mm -hmm. is, um, and let's just throw it out on this to have a conversation is, I think it's really easy to connect. Mm -hmm. However, it's truly difficult to truly connect. Yes. And that's the, and that's the point that we'd like to make here. It's easy to connect. We have all different ways to connect. But without those deep, meaningful conversations, connection truly doesn't happen. Yeah. So these conversation skills are really important. I think another area um, where we can enable our sales professionals now is in navigating relational networks. Now, the beautiful thing, and I'm just going to throw this uh, slide up here because this is just one little chunk of the authentic prospecting course. But if you think about the world we live in right now, we actually are hyper connected in terms of the networks. And, and you think of a sales professional um, here on this particular example diagram, you know, there's, there's all these different relational networks that a sales professional has from the current and former clients to friends and family, all the way through to um, nonprofits are involved in and all of that. And inside accounts, especially for our friends listening in that are in B2B selling, um, we know from the challenger customer that there's, you know, just about six people on average involved in the average B2B buying decision. Uh, research as uh, I've communicated with Brent Adamson a couple of years back on this. Um, it's now in some, some industries up in double digits. What does that mean? It means that there's more than one buyer and it means there's more than one entry point to the account. And it means that we've got to really get good at building and navigating, building relationships inside these relational networks. Because when it comes to a decision inside most buying situations today, the reality is we need to have authentic relationships with more than one person or we're putting ourselves and our sales team in a very, very risky position in the deal. Yeah. And, and here's what I'd like everyone to start thinking about is how are you going to bridge those gaps? Daryl, can you pull up that slide again, mm -hmm. please? Is I, th there's, there's a lot of power behind this because I think quite often as, as salespeople out there, we focus in on those one, two or three common points of entry all the time. Mm -hmm. But here's what I'd like for us to think about, especially in bridging these gaps, is there's more than one way to enter into any given business, into any one given organization. Mm -hmm. And it's the strength of your relational network is who do you have the strongest relationship with that could possibly help you get in and start engaging in a conversation with those key decision makers or influencers? Yeah. And this goes beyond, uh, I'm sure every organization uh, by now has been through some level of training on how to set up a LinkedIn profile and how to search for people uh, inside a social network, this goes beyond that to actually going, okay, what is, what is, let's map this out and let's look at how we can tackle this target account together, how we can combine our relational skills of connection and building relationships with a uh, strategy uh, to get into these uh, accounts and to get tighter inside our current account base, not just target accounts. And that's where authentic relationship comes in. And there's, we could do a whole, we could spend the whole time today talking about strategies on that. But when it comes to sales enablement, um, I think that authentic relationship and enabling that, the skills around developing and sustaining authentic relationships, navigating inside networks, making meaningful connection while knowing congruent, you know, having some congruence with, with who you are as a person, helping our reps through that sets the stage for authentic relationship. But that brings us to our next point on the trust formula. If you're keeping score, you'll remember that is meaningful value, meaningful value. Value is in the eye of the beholder, right? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Value is in the eye of the beholder. And it's interesting because I, I think while our companies, I hope you come, I'm confident your company has great products. I'm confident your company has great product literature and presentations and all of that stuff, hopefully great website with that communicates value. But our role as sales professionals, when it comes to building trust is to understand from the client's perspective, 
what value is meaningful to them. And this gets into being able to drive not maybe traditional sales conversation, but what I, I like to call business conversation. And and you just boy, you just hit on something because th this is the area. If there's something that just concerns me, is if you want to bring meaningful value, then we have to understand what. And and this is this is what I love about this part of this is what constitutes business conversation and how do you encourage and foster developing business acumen mm -hmm. with your salespeople? Because these are the two things that are going to just escalate meaningful value. Well, and this is what's so important. And actually, this is a quote from uh, from my book, Revenue Growth Engine. I believe this passionately is that your buyers don't buy products and services. They buy the outcomes those products and services enable. Clay Christensen and Bob Mesta would say they don't uh, they don't buy your products. They hire them for a job to be done. And so one of the ways we enable trust, when, when a sales professional goes in and all they've received is product knowledge, and they're not able to talk with business acumen, then they're just a walking, talking brochure. You might as well have sent them a YouTube video, you know, or, uh, li or link to a website. Yeah, exactly. Because it's hard to have a two way conversation that establishes trust um, if there's low business acumen. And one of the ways we can enable our sales reps to deliver meaningful value is to understand the concept of outcomes to understand our clients' businesses, and then to equip them with the skills to drive that type of business conversation and the types of uh, questioning that exhibits curiosity and not manipulation. No, no, none whatsoever. And there, there's a term that's just near and dear to me, Daryl, and that's equal business stature. Mm -hmm. And, and yes. I'm, I'm telling you, if you as a sales leader and your sales team can nail this, you're going to get that seat right next to that person and that buying group. Yes. And so when it comes to enabling our sales reps, we're thinking about building trust here when, in meaningful value. I think that statement you just said, Larry, really encapsulates it is how do we coach our reps and empower our reps to have equal business stature with the people they're meeting with. Yeah. And here's what I'd submit is um, you don't have to necessarily be just as smart as these people. Right. However, at least be able to engage in that type of conversation using their vocabulary and terms that they understand as opposed to your sales centric terms. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've been talking about how to uh, build trust, the trust formula, for review, discipline, uh, well, going backwards, you say the trust <laughs> formula backwards, Larry, authentic relationship plus meaningful value Two, that's the core of all of this. Um, in fact, if sales enablement, uh, if, if we work in those two areas, you're going to get really far down the track, but I like multipliers because multipliers take something and make it better multiplications better than addition. So what are the multipliers? One of the multipliers is what we call inspirational experience. Larry, you and I got to uh, <laughs> hang out with our friend, the man in the yellow tux, Jesse Cole. And uh, I love telling Jesse Cole's <laughs> story uh, of, well, Jesse, you got to tell Jesse Cole's story. Cause this, it, this I think encapsulates the ability to take something that's boring and make it very, very special. Well, first of all, if there's anyone who pushes the button on an experience, it's our friend at Selling from the Heart, Jesse Cole. And baseball is near and dear to me, but we know that baseball is long, boring, and slow. <laughs> Very strategic, but long, boring, and slow. Yes. So he took this thought and he says, what can I do? As he bought the Savannah Bananas, just it's it's a it's a low end baseball team in Savannah, Georgia. But what he did is he flipped this around. He created a fan's first experience. Now, if you follow anything about Jesse Cole, his two idols are Walt Disney and P.T. <laughs> Barnum. Those two people set the mark with experience. So here's what I'd like for us to, to think about. And Jesse's done a masterful job at this. He's always pushing the button on bringing in experience like none other to the table. Every single day he's working on what can he and his team and his people do to enhance 
the fan experience. Here's what we'd submit to you as sales leaders and salespeople. What are you willing to do every day to enhance your client experience? Push the button on this a little bit. Well, and this is what's so powerful, right? Because if you think about customer experience and, and that whole category is you, not usually something that is, is thought about in sales. It's usually thought about in operations and customer success. But if you think about this concept of the experience, so much of the experience a prospect or a client has with a company is based on what your sales professionals are doing. And not only what they're doing, but how they're going about it. And if uh, if Jesse Cole can take baseball, which I agree <laughs> with Jesse, is long and boring, and uh, turn it into something that's so fun that they've sold out their games for like two seasons in advance, I think is the latest, then, then also look and go, what can we do to enable our sales reps to create a meaningful experience? Uh, first of all, that builds competitive advantage. Um, there is incredible opportunity to differentiate from other sales professionals. By the way, it's fun um, if you make it fun. And it also adds emotion. And, you know, our, our son from the heart friend <laughs> and guru, Tom Hopkins, told us, you know, told me 30 years ago when I started selling, buyers don't buy on facts, they buy an emotion. And uh, I believe that wholeheartedly. Well, how are we going to create emotion partly through that authentic relationship, but we can also create emotion, positive emotion around the experience we deliver and coaching reps to develop their own inspirational experience and to set things up so that they establish competitive advantage that becomes a multiplier in every ratio um, in appointments set closes, upsells, customer satisfaction, referrals, all of those things. Uh, that's a massive game changer. You know, I, I want to go back to this emotion and these feelings for just a second, because our dear friend, Don Bard and the author of The Perfect Plan, inside The Perfect Plan, he even, he pokes at this even more, mm -hmm. Daryl, when he, when he says, very few are going to remember facts and figures 10 minutes after you leave that conversation. However, 100% of the time, they're going to remember how you made them feel. That's sales right. leaders and salespeople, please, please key in on this. When you're bringing those experiences to the forefront with your clients and I'll submit to your future clients, how are you making them feel? That's right. And furthermore, can they share those experiences with others? So we can enable that. We can coach our reps on how to do it. We can train them. We can empower them, equip them with tools to create an inspirational experience. So we got authentic relationships, meaningful, valued, inspirational experience, the last one uh, doesn't sound quite so fun, but I think this one's really important. That's the disciplined habits. Energy management, time management are two categories that, that we want to talk about today. Um, well, let's just start here, Larry. We, <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a friend, uh, Garland Vance, Dr. Garland Vance, uh, wrote the book Unbusy. And you know he said at the beginning of that book, if you ask anybody especially a sales professional, a high performance sales professional, how's it going? What are eight out of 10 of them going to say? Man, I've been real busy. I'm out there doing stuff, Daryl. I am busy. Yeah. And so here's what the challenge with all that. Of course, we're busy, you know, and sometimes, sometimes that then becomes the, well, I'm too busy to do dot, 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 right? Guys, I'm too busy to dot, 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 insert whatever, whatever it is. Uh, but the reality is um, sales is a an extremely demanding profession. And so for the people on your sales team, um, it is a demanding profession. There is a lot of pressure for performance. Uh, there's a lot of rejection. <laughs> like, you know, it's 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 tough. It's brutal. And when it comes to building trust, we've got to have disciplined habits that allow us to show up, to be present to have energy and to be ready to go with insights, with ideas um, and being engaged. And, and a lot of this comes down to uh, disciplined habits around managing not just time, but also energy. And the, and Daryl, these are all things that we can control. Absolutely. 100%. We, yeah, they, absolutely. 
they can be coached. And and this is, uh, you know, when we think of sales enablement now, um, it's part of me thinks maybe this is um, this is something that needs to be at the top of the list because until you can get um, your hand as a sales professional, until I can get a handle on my time, my energy, um, and some of the underlying even health issues around that, you know, having good health habits to back that up, uh, we we end up putting ourselves in a place where we're either like walking through mud or we're spinning our wheels. And, um, you know, and what ends up happening in the middle of all of that is stress builds up. We actually are seeing right now, and this has become more and more evident over the last couple of years in conversations we're having on the Selling from the Heart podcast, that there is a growing issue in the sales profession of like deep mental and physical health issues coming out of uh, poor habits in some cases um, around sales. Like literally it's, it's killing, killing us. Well, you know, I remember, you know, I remember what Garland Vance had said is, you know, a lot of times we wear that busy, you know, the busy badge is that badge of honor. And, and I'll be the first one. I'll throw my hand up and say, you know, my whole entire career in, in sales is, you mm-hmm. know, my calendar and everything was managed based on how busy I was out in the field. Yeah. And so I, some basic coaching and, you know, we're, we're working in the, um, the selling from the heart, authentic selling courses. Every one of those courses has a module on disciplined habits because it's such an important thing right now for salespeople to be able to not only grow and do all of the things that um, that need to be done to to maintain and establish trust, um, but to also do it to reframe their sales career and their days in a way that it's not soul crushing and literally burning people out. To where you know some people are just walking away from the profession even because of this. I think this is a sales enablement thing that is really really critical right now. Is helping people develop disciplined habits. Also, I would say maybe healthy healthy habits along with this in the in light of of all that we're doing right now. Yeah, we and we've talked all along about mindset. Well, also I'll also bring into this. This is heart set. This is healthy heart set, and mm-hmm. I think they both go along together. Yeah. And this is, I mean, this all comes through, you know, building trust is straightforward as it involves managing expectations, managing communication, delivering on what you promise, uh, straight out of selling from the heart. And all of that has to do with your disciplined habits, you know? So, so in, in context of all of this, you know, the question that, that then comes back to all of us as sales enablement professionals. And by the way, um, Larry and I view ourselves as sales enablement professionals. We enable sales teams uh, to thrive with what we do here at Selling from the Heart with our message and our team of coaches and our training and all of that. Um, But the question comes back to us is how can we enable our sales teams to integrate trust into the sales process as well? And this is how we think about it. You know, if you look at the sales process, um, you know, you start with prospecting. How do we how do we build trust while we're prospecting? How do we set this up, Larry, so that we actually not only get appointments, but we walk into the first appointment with trust already being established and people excited to talk with us? Well, I think um, if if we let's just flip this around it in, and we always started authentic client management. I, I think that's the place to start this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, uh, let's start there too, because before you get to prospecting, what if you could actually uh, prospect out of a network of super happy clients? And, 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 here, and here's why I say this, and let's just, let's just focus in on this just for a moment. We're not discrediting prospecting, none whatsoever, mm-hmm. but I'm a big believer as is Daryl. I believe the key, the key to new business growth comes directly through your clients. Mm-hmm. And it's how well you build those deep, meaningful relationships and bring value to your clients. Because I'm a big believer in this. The more you get to know your clients, the more you'll be able to grow with your clients. This is, we talked about these relational networks. This is what's going to fuel 
authentic prospecting. It comes right through your client base. That's right. And then that authentic prospecting, while we're establishing trust during the initial phase of the sale, then moves into the selling phase. And that's where, especially for our friends in B2B, where you've got to build a collaboration and agreement across teams of people. And so when you look at every phase, whether it's prospecting, authentic selling, or client management, the question is, how do you integrate authentic relationships, meaningful value, inspirational experience, and disciplined habits into those four areas? And what we've discovered is when you do that, good things happen. It, it, and it all happens with taking action. And, you know, as, as we, as we, as Daryl and I were thinking about, you know, what is the trust equation? It's, it's simple to, you know, it, it might be simple for you, for you to look at and go, oh, okay, well, I get it. But it's the disciplined habits part of this that brings this full circle. It's about consistently bringing those habits to the forefront, Daryl. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what's exciting right now is we believe uh, that and we're seeing that being intentional about trust building skills, enabling trust in your sales team yields results in every one of these three areas. And if, the, if we were to add one other thing to this, in addition to the trust formula being applied to these three areas, also saying as sales leaders, how can we create a culture of trust? And we all know uh, Peter Drucker's famous line, culture eats strategy for breakfast, right? So how can we create cultures in our sales teams that foster trust? And unfortunately, uh, the reality in many sales teams is the culture, either intentionally or unintentionally, doesn't necessarily foster trust, which ends up hurting our sales results. So how can we create a high performance culture that fosters trust and so that our salespeople are not only enabled with the skills they need to build trust, but it's also modeled for them every time they walk back into the office. It, it is why it's so important as sales leaders, I'll use the term rudder. We are the rudder. Yeah. We're, we're, we're steering our sales team in the direction that it needs to go. That's right. So that's uh, our, our, our premise here is trust is the currency of sales. Buyers want trust. Buyers don't trust salespeople. So it's incumbent upon us. There's a massive opportunity right now for us as sales enablement leaders to enable trust in our teams. We want to challenge you in this. We want to resource you in any way we can. Uh, we would welcome you to join the conversation uh, we're here to talk. One of the ways that you can join the conversation, by the way, and this is just brand new. We just had our first sales leaders mastermind with community and leadership growth for sales leaders. It's the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, we had a fantastic time. And if you want to meet some like-hearted sales leaders and other sales enablement, people who believe that trust is the X factor and, and they want to grow uh, grow trust in their teams. Come hang out with us. We're having a great conversation. Larry and I would be uh, happy to talk with any of you about this in the comments here on LinkedIn, as well as uh, you know, jump on a Zoom call because this is the issue right now that I believe this is not just the issue; it's the opportunity that's going to propel sales teams to the next level of not only results but also sustainability and satisfaction. And all of the things that that make people want to come to work for you and stay there. Now, I, I wholeheartedly agree, and I just want to get back to the sales mastermind just for a second. Is th this is ongoing? So even though we do meet the first Tuesday or the second Tuesday, excuse me, of every month, the ongoing conversations take place in a private social network. And th th to me, this is this is where the magic happens. Yeah, it's great. So go to sellingfromtheheart.net slash mastermind. Once again, I just want to thank you. Uh, thank everybody for, for sharing time with us today. It's an honor uh, to share time with you. We are committed to equipping and enabling sales teams with the skills they need to build trust. So if you want to talk about any of those things, we're happy to do it. Uh, but as we sign off today, we just want to say a huge thank you to all of the folks 
in sales enablement and sales leadership who are out there bringing this to the table and, and fighting for this and working to equip your reps to be successful and fulfilled and uh, all of it. It's, uh, it's really cool. Keep up the great work. Yeah, we appreciate all of you. All right. Have a super day, everybody.